Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about some exciting news. As you might have heard, there is a drug that's been making news all over the world for potentially being one of the first drugs to treat Alzheimer's disease to show actual promise in clinical phase 3 trials. That's right, today we are going to talk about the drug Lecanimab. So now let's get like started with this exciting news and see actually how the drug works. But before actually seeing the mechanism of action of the drug, we should have a basic understanding of the way Alzheimer's disease works and progresses. So there is three main things that we should know about about Alzheimer's disease. The first one is the tubulin associated unit proteins. The second one is the amyloid beta proteins. The third one is the chron chronic inflammation of the brain tissue. And the last thing we are going to talk about is the potential new drug itself, lecanimab, and we are going to see how it works. So first, let's start by talking about the tubulin, tub tubulin associated units protein themselves. These are basically proteins that are found in the neurons of the central nervous system. They are found in lower extents in other cell types, for example, microglia, astrocytes, and those types of cells. But for the purposes of this video, let's stick to the central nervous system neurons. Basically, their main function, as you might have guessed from the name, is they associate with microtubules and they help them have a structure and basically organize microtubules, disassemble them and gain, they give them a structure. And we should also know that the tubulin associated units have other roles. For example, they are important in, in recruiting other signaling proteins, but they also have a role with regulating mRNA synthesis in the neurons. And the key thing that you have to know for this presentation is the basically what happens is if you look at the left hand side of the picture or the diagram, you will see the red filaments that are organized neatly together. And when they are organized neatly, which is the case in healthy individuals, if you see the microtubules, the microtubules also form properly and they organize, the microtubules organize properly and function properly. But for unknown reasons, unfortunately, sometimes these tubulin associated units become hyperphosphorylated. And if you look at the blue dots, the blue dots on the right side of the diagram represent a hyperphosphorylation of these tubulin associated units. And when they become hyperphosphorylated, as you can see, they clump up together and no longer have their original proper formation. They are basically misfolded now and they can't function properly because they are just cl all clumped up together. And what this causes is essentially the microtubules can no longer function properly. If you look at the bottom right hand side of the picture and compare it to the left hand side of the bottom, you can see that the microtubule is in a weird conformation or is like even disassembling. This is because the tubulin associated units aren't there to support the microtubules and when the microtubules don't function this causes the neurons to die but also another thing is these these uh, tubulin associated units clump up together and they also damage the neurons just by taking up space and just interfering with other proteins and other metabolites of the cell so they also directly harm the cell but they also harm the microtubules. And as you might have already known, neurons aren't, for example, like your typical liver cells or skin cells. Once they die, they die forever because you don't get to regenerate neurons. They are like the special type of cells that one of the special types of cells that are just there forever in your brain. Once you once they die, they are not coming back. So the main thing I, you just have to know is that the accumulation of the 
hyperphosphorylated tubulin associated units is something that is often seen in Alzheimer's patients. So now let's talk about the other, other important feature of Alzheimer's disease, which is amyloid beta proteins. So basically in Alzheimer's disease, what we see commonly is that these amylo beta proteins, which are unlike the tubulin associated units, they are actually outside of the cells. They basically, if they get cleaved improperly, when they are released, they disrupt the function of neurons and aggregate together and basically damage the cell membrane and the receptors of on the neurons. So if you look at, for example, the diagram on the right hand side compared to the left hand side, you can see all of these brown ball plaques or plaques, which basically is interfering with neurons so they can't communicate with each other but they also can't communicate with other support cells, for example, microglial cells. And this causes the neurons to die because one, they can't get like nutrition, but they also can't communicate properly with other neurons. So this is also one of the main things that, for example, you see the cognitive decline in someone with Alzheimer's. This is because the neurons are severely damaged and most of them end up dying. The, another thing with these, amyloid beta misfolded proteins is that once they come once they are like out of the cell and stuff they can interact with other proteins in in the extracellular space and they can actually cause other proteins to become misfolded whether they are like amyloid beta proteins or other proteins so they also interfere with other proteins which is also extremely bad because obviously like it causes the neurons to die and if you see for example another important part is if you see for example in some individuals for example in a healthy individual on the left hand side there is a small plaques but these plaques are typically removed very quickly by the microglial cells and they don't become huge problems because they just get get taken up by microglial and chopped down but in patients with alzheimer's for unknown reasons the microglial can't get rid of the plaques properly and they just become bigger bigger and their numbers go up unfortunately and um, basically another important um, part of the presentation for you to understand is these amyloid beta proteins are actually what the drug like canimab actually targets and we will see later on how it act it helps the patients with alzheimer's so the last thing we should talk about is chronic inflammation of the brain tissue. And here, what we need to remember is that when microglial are activated by the amyloid beta cells, they want to pick up the plaques to help the neurons, but since they can't function properly and they can't pick up the plaques, and chop them chop them down in their in their proper way they become overstimulated and they keep on getting activated activated and basically it leads to overactivation of the microglial cells in alzheimer's patients and then they release toxic substances which, which actually hurts the neurons for example like reactive oxygen species which are basically very very toxic to the neurons and since they are they keep on getting the microglial keep on getting activated they keep on releasing these toxic species or toxic proteins or other substances and these substances further damage neurons and help the neurodegeneration continue another thing to mention is that tREM2 pro mutations in the gene tREM2 and this gene is really involved in, for example, it's a transmembrane protein and it's really involved in the microglial ability, which are basically, microglial are basically resident macrophages. And basically TREM2 is involved in picking up plaque 
and cho chopping it down and just helping the neurons by getting rid of the plaques that I mentioned, the amylo beta plaques. And when there is deleterious mutations in TREM2, which some individuals carry, this means that those individuals are at a higher risk of Alzheimer's because those mutations don't allow the microglial to chop down or pick up the amylo beta proteins properly which causes them which causes extra inflammation so if you are if you have or an individual has trem2 mutations in that gene then you're more likely to get alzheimer's and the last thing that you should know for the chronic inflammation is basically it is a positive pathway like positive regulation because the more inflammation it causes the more microglial want to pick up the amyl amylo beta amyloid beta plaques and unfortunately that causes them to release even more substances which increases the inflammation and then the cycle repeats and repeats and the inflammation keeps on getting worse and worse and worse and this really impacts the microglial cells because after a while when they get overstimulated they are just not as good as picking up the, the amylo beta proteins basically what they say is oh i'm working really really hard and i no longer can function properly because i'm just so tired of being overworked and stuff so the inflammation actually causes the microglial to not be able to pick up the beta amyloid beta plaques properly also so now the exciting part the new drug is that you are all waiting for is this is how it works it is basically lecanemab is a humanized antibody that has shown promising results in the phase three trials so what i mean by humanized is basically it is an antibody that is grown in other species other than humans for example maybe mice pigs and those types of species and if you try to inject the antibodies that you have collected from mice into humans the immune system of humans will be like wait a second those are not mine those are someone else's antibodies so i'm going to actually target the antibodies and that will actually cause a lot of problems because your body is attacking the drug itself which makes the drug inactive and leads to more inflammation and more damage to your cells so basically what happens here is this antibody they make it humanized by inserting the some amino acids from the human humans in and what happens is now the sequence for the dna that transcribes like that codes the instruction for the antibody actually has some sequences that code for human peptides like human amino acids so now the amino acid the, when the drug is the humanized drug is injected inside your cells or inside your body your immune system isn't going to overreact because they will be like your immune cells will be like oh this is one of those mm, antibodies that my beta cells secreted so that's why you have to make it humanized and basically the way it works if you look at the diagram is the antibodies in attack or they have a very specific target because they're monoclonal they target basically the amyloid beta the proteins that we talked about and they target the surface peptides of the amyloid beta proteins and this basically alerts the microglial cells and it, they are basically shouting for help they are like microglial cells come and take in this play plaque out and chop it down into a smaller pieces so they basically serve as like danger danger take this molecule away from here so for whatever reason maybe your microglial cells aren't very good at recognizing the amyloid beta plaques but when they look at the antibodies especially like the fc region like the end region of the antibody they are like oh this antibody is telling me to get rid of this 
immediately. So they are a lot better at getting rid of the plaque, which actually helps your body not have as many plaques as without the drug so the plaque concentration goes down which allows your neurons to be more healthy and live longer so that's how it like it slows down the progression of the disease by helping getting by lowering plaque concentration in patients so now just a brief note before we end the presentation it is important to realize that this isn't a cure and it is like a, obviously a step forward and it's great to see scientists hard work coming into actual treatments for patients but another thing to note is that there will there is still a long time for the drug to actually become available to the public and another thing is unfortunately this drug has some side effects that the scientists published in the peer review journal and the preliminary data has shown that there is some serious side effects such as area h and area e basically what those are is basically damaging of the tight junctions or like the blood vessels of the brain and what happens is fluid or blood is leaking inside the brain which causes which causes the brain tissue to swell up and now there is like all sort of like tissue mm, proteins and mm, blood eh, and just like plasma in general to be collected inside your brain which is obviously really bad it can cause headaches and in severe cases you actually need brain surgery to help ease up the tension in the brain and the last thing i also wanted to mention is this drug is also really really cool because it paves the way for new drugs because alzheimer's has often been think as like a disease that it's really hard to make drugs to treat alzheimer's but the scientists who made who made this drug are actually showing the scientific community that you can actually treat Alzheimer's and hopefully in the future there, there will be more scientists working and more drugs that help Alzheimer's patients. Thank you for watching.